Well, good morning, everyone. I uh, appreciate you all being here and, and sharing in this practice. So it's been quite a week. Um, I'm, I'm sure all of us have had thoughts swirling around. But we, uh, we hope that our president and the first lady and all the others across the country afflicted with COVID and all the others around the world who are suffering this disease will recover and suffer little. Last, uh, last week, we talked about dealing with regrettable behaviors. We talked about repentance. Um, so I, I thought this week it might be useful for us to explore, share our thoughts about the, the other side of the coin, uh, meritorious behaviors, merit. Now, when I, uh, when I first got involved at the Missouri Zen Center and there was this dedication of merit chant, I, I found it very confusing. I, I didn't know what merit actually meant and, and uh, the idea of dedicating it uh, was also obscure. So I, I really didn't understand the whole concept. So I, I guess I would just like to share with you um, my um, travels to date <laughs> in, in, trying to, uh, in trying to understand this and talk a little bit about merit and the dedication of merit. So So what is merit? Um, merit is a, a concept, a notion that I'm sure long preceded the Buddha, but that the Buddha did incorporate into some of his teachings. Not real prominent, but it's, it's there. And the idea is that by doing good things, by doing good deeds, you accumulate this kind of asset called merit. And one belief about merit was that you could cash this in when you died and, and it would lead to a, a better rebirth. You would be reborn in a more favorable realm or as a more favorable form. In other words, you would have less suffering in, in a future life. So that was one notion of, of merit. And since people were also concerned about their relatives, there was another use of merit, and that was to transfer merit. So that, for instance, if cousin George was kind of fond of his liquor and fond of his women and, and died and, and, and you had concerns about if you, if you believe that cousin George would be coming back in some form and, and you had concerns about what that form would look like and what was in store for cousin George because he really liked the guy even though he had his faults. 
you could transfer some of your merit to cousin George. And um, through a, sort of a chant or, or some sort of ceremony, you could transfer merit to cousin George and, and help him out, help him uh, be reborn in a more favorable circumstance. And, and one good feature of merit is, is that when you transfer it out, you don't lose any of it yourself. So, so that you're not really, it doesn't really cost you anything to transfer merit to cousin George because you still have the same amount of asset yourself. So, so this was a practice and it still is a practice of transferring merit to deceased relatives. So um, I'm going to just um, if I can figure out how to do this. Here we go. Uh, bring up this little section from the Pali Canon where the Buddha advises to train in acts of merit and meritorious acts that bring long lasting bliss. And he suggests three methods of doing this, develop generosity, develop a life in tune, develop a mind of goodwill. Developing these three things that brings about bliss the wise reappear in a world of bliss unalloyed. So um, that sort of speaks to that notion I was talking about. Well, as Buddhist practice and thought develop, It, there seemed to be a clash between this notion of accumulating merit for yourself by doing good things and the idea of cultivating selflessness, of not being self-centered. Because of your motivation for doing good things, for helping people out, if there was this ulterior motive of, well, it's going to gain me a better rebirth, all this seemed a little tainted. So then in, in the Mahayana tradition, the, the notion of transferring or dedicating merit to all beings came about. And at the end of Mahayana ceremonies, typically there is some sort of dedication of merit. And, and it takes um, different forms. I, I collected a couple, some you may be familiar with and others not. But um, this was interesting. It comes from the One Earth Sangha. And this is a, it's, it's, it's basically an online Sangha um, focused on environmental concern. And they have a dedication of merit that goes like this. May all places be held sacred. May all beings be cherished. May all injustices of oppression and devaluation be fully righted, remedied, and healed. May all beings everywhere delight in whale song, bird song, and blue sky. 
May all beings abide in peace and well-being, awaken and be free. So they take in not only all, all beings, but also the environment as well. And also address concerns about societal injustice. From the Theravadan forest monk tradition, may all beings live happily free from animosity, may all share in the blessing springing from the good I have done. And just a couple more from the bamboo in the wind Sangha, may the merit these practice of these practices extend to all sentient beings and free them from suffering. And uh, finally, from the Missouri Zen Center, the, the first uh, chant of dedication of merit that I encountered, may this merit be extended to all. And may we together with all sentient beings realize the awakened way. I think at some point, um, uh, Ros Rosan Yoshida there, the abbot at the Zen Center, uh, took out sentient because he wanted to also include non-sentient beings, inanimate objects, rivers and mountains and seas, sky. And finally, our abbreviated um, dedication of merit that um, we have customarily used here, may all beings be safe, may all beings be at peace, and may all beings be liberated. So um, what, what function does this dedication of merit serve? I mean, do we really believe that we can um, save all beings by having a practice session here? Well, I, I, think, I think one function that a dedication of merit has is helping us deal with meritorious behaviors. Just, just like repentance helps us deal with regrettable behaviors. A dedication of merit reminds us that the practice we do, the practice in our lives, the work we do in the world, whatever, should not be considered just for ourselves alone. It has ripples that spread out. So whatever we do affects everything else. what we buy at the store, how we conduct ourselves with others, the kind of work we do and how we do it, it all affects other beings and ultimately many, many other beings. And you could even say all beings. And if those meritorious behaviors, if those good deeds that one does give rise to any sense of righteousness, 
any sense of pride. Then the dedication of merit is an opportunity to let go of that, to give that up, to give that out to everyone else. Because ultimately, if just as carrying remorse around isn't really wholesome or beneficial, carrying pride around isn't wholesome or beneficial either. So give it up, give it up, give it away, dedicate the merit and be done with it and move on to the next task. Last time we talked about with regrettable behaviors, facing it, accepting it. Responding to it and letting go. And I think I think the same thing can apply when any sense of self-righteousness or pride comes up, just accept that it's come up, face it, accept that, yes, this is here. It's something I'm experiencing. Respond to it. Just send it out send it out as a dedication of merit in some form and let it go. You don't have to carry it around. <clears throat> it's not your fault. It's the way we're programmed. Let it go. So I think this uh, dedication of merit, in a way similar to the vow of repentance, a way of helping us not get caught up, not get caught up in regret, remorse, pride, self-righteousness, not get caught up. Send it out. There was a, um, a meeting I attended years ago by a teacher who was here in, uh, in St. Louis. And uh, she, she was taking questions from the audience. And um, they, were, they were talking about, you know, sort of consumerism, greed, that sort of thing, and simplifying the one's life. And, and one of the questioners um, was very candid. He said, you know, uh, I've been struggling with this. I, I, I really, really want a leather jacket, but I, 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 feel, I feel like I, I, sh I really shouldn't get it. There are all kinds of issues with leather jackets. Of course, they're can be attractive and, and warm and durable, etc. But of course, they come from animal hide. And you could say, well, the animal's already dead. But in any case, there are issues with leather jackets. And, and the, the gentleman was struggling with this issue. And what the teacher advised was, well, just give the jacket to Buddha, <laughs> give the leather jacket to Buddha, let, let him have it. So I think these, this dedication of merit is a, is a means to help us travel light. And this practice is a means to help us travel light. 
and the various rituals and chants and traditions that have arisen are to help us. So I, I, I think I'll, I'll stop there and, and see if anyone else has ideas about merit, meritorious behavior, and dealing with pride. I'll mention one other thing that came up this week that I just thought of. There was, um, I've been uh, working from my basement uh, for the past six months and um, the, um, the computer that allows me to have telemedicine visits um, is in, in my office. And so uh, the people I'm speaking with remotely are, are sitting in my office. I haven't seen my office in over six months. So um, one person I was seeing brought her mother along and her mother towards the end of the visit, after she'd asked questions, she said, oh, I'm admiring your wall of fame here. And I had no idea what she was talking about. I had to ask her and she said, oh, all these, all these uh, diplomas, and certificates. So she was just referring to sort of the accoutrements of, of the livelihood that, that I've led, um, you know, the, the various certificates and diplomas and whatnot that were hanging on one wall. I, I couldn't see the wall because the camera wasn't faced in that direction. And it occurred to me that I just hadn't thought about those, <laughs> those framed documents in many, many years. Uh, they, they were just, even when I was in the office, they just uh, escaped my attention. And it occurred to me that if they were all lost in a fire, it wouldn't, wouldn't bother me at all. I, I, I realized that the quality of any service I provide is, is really dependent on how engaged I am with the person in front of me. And it really doesn't depend greatly on all of those pieces of paper. And another way of thinking about those pieces of paper is that, you know, whatever merit achieved by um, earning those, as they say, is really shared by many, many people, all the people that supported me, my parents, my relatives, my friends, my coworkers, my teachers, the people who built the buildings that I worked in, people who cleaned those buildings and maintained them, the administrators that sort of kept things running, all of that is in those pieces of paper. So another way of looking at, at this when pride arises is to Converted into gratitude, and gratitude for all the people, all the beings, all the support that has enabled whatever meritorious act occurred. So thank you, thank you for your um, attention, and I'll, 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 I really will stop there. Thank you so much. And I'd be very interested in any comments. <laughs>